Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of our Flinch Squad Circuit Review Show. So we are kicking into the Ultra Series VGC 2019 into week two of the circuit. We kicked off in our last episode with week one. We had a great feature match and we've got another one here for you today. So we're going into week two of the tournament and things are heating up really nicely going into this circuit. So as I said at the beginning of the tournament in our last episode, we are starting the tournament with a Swiss round and that is going to and determine our group stages so this week we're going into week two we're going to catch up with content this week on the channel we're going to be featuring week two three and four in separate episodes throughout this week so i hope you enjoy all the battles as we get caught up with the ultra series flinch squad circuit and as you can see going into week two these are the matchups and i'll throw them right up on the screen for you right now so you can see going into week two we're going to have the pairing xenophist ace versus pinko alex versus cameron stew versus costa nappy versus Luigi, Marcus versus Pokemarty VGC, Worm's Eye versus Salty Electabuzz, Salcro and VGC versus Ryan, PB Herbert and Shade versus Yorine, Chansey Mansi versus Krim, Kazumi versus Will and Nightlight versus Johnny Hack. So we've got some incredible games for us going into week two, but the feature match that I picked out going into this week is a really exciting one. We've got some odd pick Pokemon as well. It's a really good match, so I hope you guys enjoy it. We are going to be featuring Pokemarty versus Marcus. So without further ado, guys, sit back, relax. I hope you enjoy this one, and we'll get straight into this match between Pokemarty and Marcus. So as you can see, we're going straight into this Pokemon. He's going to be on the bottom of your screen, and Marcus Leo is his trainer name on the top screen here. As we see, Pokemon kicking us off with the Incineroar and Gengar, and Marcus leading out with that Lunala and Gyarados. Gyarados, a Pokemon that you don't generally see in the format, a really nice pick. And if it is that Mega Gyarados, like we do expect, putting a lot of pressure on the Gengar. But a really nice lead here from Marcus. He's got the Lunala, which does pressure that Gengar, even if it is Mega Gengar, because of that Shadow Shield there. And the Gyarados with its water typing that does threaten that Incineroar. Gyarados just switching straight out here for Marcus as he does switch straight into that Incineroar, just in case of that Shadow Tag ability on the Gengar there, so not wanting to get trapped in with the Gyarados. As we do see, Pokemon he Mega Evolve that Gengar and activate that Shadow Tag. Obviously, Lunala being a Ghost type is not affected by that. As we see the Gengar just go for the Protect here, we are going to see the Lunala throw up a Tailwind from Marcus' side, giving the speed advantage going into this next turn. And the Incineroar here on Pokemon's side, just going for a U turn and into that Lunala. Going to break that Shadow Shield and make it a bit more vulnerable to the Gengar going into the next turn. But that Tailwind from Marcus really put him in a nice position going into this next turn, especially with the Incineroar now having that active fake out going into this next turn and the Lunala are going to be putting a lot of pressure onto the Gengar. Although the Pokemon he does have this straight switch out with Gengar into Incineroar which you're probably going to see now as he does switch that Gengar out and Incineroar cycling back onto the field to take a potential Moongeist Beam from this Lunala on Marcus's side. So you see the Intimidate cycle from this Incineroar onto both targets on Marcus's side of the field. We're going to see the Incineroar go for that fake out just nullify that Landorus on Marty's side. Not allowed to do any attacking damage this turn. We are going to see the Moongeist Beam here from the Lunala now fired out. Which targets is it going to be into? It is into that Gengar slot, which now the Incineroar, and it does soak that up pretty nicely. The Landorus flinches on Marty's side of the field, but the Lunala feeling a little bit pressured now does switch out for Marcus. The Gyarados is going to come on the field. Cycle that Intimidate. Again, it is a war of attrition with these Intimidates now just cycling from both sides. So it does come out onto the Incineroar and the Landorus on Marty's side of the field. The in Intimidate the Incineroar on Marcus's side, gonna just U turn out now, gonna switch itself out, preserve itself for later, take advantage of that tailwind to get that quick pivot out. Zalunala now makes its way back onto the field for Marcus, and a sword stance coming out from the Landorus on Pokemon his side of the field, gonna get rid of those Intimidates that have been thrown out onto it already as a Darkest Lyrate now coming out from the Incineroar. Gonna be into that Gyarados slot on Marcus's side of the field. Gonna do a nice bit of chip damage to that Gyarados and just put it into a little bit of a, a precarious position going into this next turn. But we do see the Gyarados on Marcus's side of the field Mega Evolve. It is gonna be that Mega Gyarados. Get that Dark Typing. Take away the Flying Typing there and 
bring that mold blicker to the field as we see the Lunala just protect out this turn in case of any sort of tectonic rage coming out from this Landorus. Now we do see the Landorus on Pokemon side of the field just protect as well as we see the Incineroar not protecting and not getting attacked by the waterfall from this Gyarados as it does U-turn out now onto that Gyarados doing some nice damage obviously super effective now because of the dark typing there as Incineroar retreats for later on in this match as the Gengar now comes out onto the field and with the Tailwind looming to finish as it does this turn the Gengar now in a position to do some nice damage to this Lunala and does actually target into the Gyarados with a Sludge Bomb picking up the poison here and getting not the KO but there we go there's a Z move now from the Lunala it is going to be the Ghost DMZ and we are going to have to cut this scene unfortunately but we will come straight back when we see which target this Lunala is going into. And the Z move into the Gengar here on Marty's side of the field and it will be more than enough to pick up the KO onto this Gengar from the Lunala on Marcus's side of the field. And you know Mark, he probably wasn't targeting there because thinking the Protect was coming out. So nice play there from Marcus as he does go for a Waterfall now into the Landorus and is able to pick up the knockout there. So big advantage here from Marcus. The Gyarados is poisoned so it is going to go down this turn but the Lunala still standing and one of its biggest threats on Marty's side of the field going down which isn't too bad of a trade-off for this Gyarados actually you know and um, getting rid of the Mega Gengar and the Landorus in one fell swoop is pretty nice for Marcus here. So the Incineroar now comes out for Marcus as well as Pokemati and that Kyogre as well we are going to see the Intimidate cycle here from Pokemati's side of the field indicating that his Incineroar is maybe the faster one of the two although they could be speed tied as we're seeing so so often in this format Intimidate coming back on to um, Pokemon side of the field as we do see this Kyogre activate its blue orb and turn into primal Kyogre going into this next turn so the match is quite even at the minute the Lunala has had its shadow shield broken and you think for going toe to toe the Kyogre is in the better position here so let's see if the Kyogre can pull through from this position you've got to think that Marcus is in a little bit of a better position though because he does have the numbers and also that ground on that now comes onto the field gonna override the weather and pretty much lock this one up now for Marcus if the ground on hadn't been in the back there for Marcus I think things would have been slightly different but the Groudon turning the tables getting rid of that rain and bringing the desolate land to the field really does make it very difficult for Marty to get any traction in the rest of this game we're gonna see the Lunala now throw out a side shock not even gonna protect here just uh, throw that out get some damage onto the field as an origin pulse returns but evaporating because of the desolate land as a darkest lariat now coming out from the Incineroar on Pogamati side of the field but intimidated not quite enough to pick up the knockout onto Lunala even though that Shadow Shield had been broken. Gonna see the next turn play out as we see a Moon Guys Beam from this Lunala now firing in to the Kyogre and do even more damage putting in a range of oppressive Blades as the Groudon connects with both targets and will probably wrap this one up for Marcus so that's a nice win game one there. Marty's got a lot to think about going into game two there's a lot of information revealed there. The Tailwind was pretty big for Marcus going into this first turn you know gives them real advantage and kind of gives them the upper hand going into most turns and Marty did a nice job with the sword stance especially with the Landorus but the trade-off between the Gengar and the Landorus for the Gyarados was just a little bit too much for him to come back from especially with the Groudon lurking in the back so we will get straight into game two here Ooh, Pogamar, you're going to make a little bit of an adjustment here coming out with the lead of Guzzlord and Kyogre in this game too. And Gyarados and Amoongus coming out for Marcus here. So we are going to see Gyarados is nice and shiny. Going to activate that Intimidate first turn onto the Guzzlord and onto the Kyogre. Predominantly, both of these are more special attackers, so not really going to affect them too much. But the Amoongus sitting in quite a nice position now. You know, there's no terrain on the field for Pokemon. So both Pokemon are kind of susceptible to that spore that it can freely throw out this turn as it's not really too threatened by a kill from either of the Pokemon on Marty's side of the field. We're going to see the, the Kyogre Primal Revert and the Rain activate onto the field. We're going to see this Gyarados go for the Mega Evolution straight away. It is going to evolve into this Mega Gyarados, gain that dark typing and become a bit of a threat but still not really threatening too much on Marty's side of the field straight away. You expect maybe a Dragon Dance could change that and that's exactly what we see come out from Marcus this turn the Dragon Dance coming out and boosting that attack and speed stat making it very threatening especially if the Gengar is lurking in the back for Pokemon. We're going to see an Ice Beam come out from the Kyogre into the Amoongus do nice chunk of 50% damage 
followed up by a Dark Pulse into the Among Us. Is it not? Oh, it's not quite enough to pick up the knockout there, as we do see the one of the 50% berries. It is going to be the Aya Papa Berry. Activate on that Among Us, and a Spore come out into this Guzzlord and put it to sleep for the remainder of this turn and into the next one. So the Guzzlord asleep here. So we go into the next turn. We're going to see the Kyogre just protect this next turn as we try and see Marty probably stall out a turn where the Guzzlord wants to wake up. We are going to see a waterfall and in the rain it's actually taking that pretty well especially after the plus one attack boost that this Mega Gyarados has got. Then going to be another spore from this Amoongus this time into the Kyogre slot and the leftovers revealed on the Guzzlord now as it does regain a little bit of its health which is going to make it a little bit difficult to take down if left alone. We're going to see another waterfall though from the Gyarados into the Guzzlord do some nice damage surviving on 32% health as a Thunder comes out from the Kyogre this time. Not something you see commonly running Kyogre but into the Gyarados. Is it enough? It's not quite enough to pick up the knockout there. The Guzzlord does stay asleep unfortunately and the Samoong is free again to just throw another Spore out onto the field and put this Kyogre to sleep rendering it useless going into this next turn. So the Gyarados in a nice position here to clean up the, the Guzzlord slot if it so wishes this next turn and the Samoong if it does have Grass Knot can throw that out into the Kyogre but not opting to go for the Guzzlord this turn, going for a crunch into the Kyogre this time. Kyogre just stays asleep for this turn as we see the Guzzlord stay asleep once again this turn. So having the maximum amount of sleeps as we see another Spore fired off into that slot. We do see the Guzzlord recover a little bit more health going into this turn as it is creeping slowly up but still very threatened by the waterfall if it comes out from the Gyarados system. We're going to see a Rage Powder this time from the Amoongus, maybe just checking in case that Kyogre does wake up as we see the Gyarados go for another crunch into the Kyogre. You've got to think this is probably enough to pick up the knockout here. Surviving on 1 HP as we see a Dragon Pulse come out from the Guzzlord. It does finally wake up and go into that Amoongus, but with the Rage Powder coming out this turn, it's not going to have the effect to put anything to sleep as the Guzzlord continues to slowly gain that health back. We are going to see the Kyogre now just switch out for Pokemon, get rid of that rain and he is going to go into the Incineroar, get rid of that Dragon Dance boost on the attack stat for the Gyarados mainly and then start putting a bit of pressure on to that Amoongus. I wonder if Marcus goes for another crunch into this slot to get rid of the Kyogre. We are going to see another Rage Powder from the Amoongus so nothing going to sleep this next turn as we do see the Gyarados go for a waterfall this time without the rain. Is it going to be enough? It's going to be very close and it's not quite enough. This Guzzlord is a tank as it throws out another Dragon Pulse into that Amoongus here as the Rage Powder does pull it into that slot and put it in range now for another Dragon Pulse to take it down or the Incineroar to take it down if it can get around this waterfall threat from the Gyarados. The Amoongus now switching out, going to activate probably that Regenerator ability that it has got access to get a bit more health back as Groudon hits the field now for Marcus and it is going to bring that desolate land to the field and the sun with it. Uh, the Gyarados susceptible to a fake out here from Pokemon which he probably wants to do just to shut that down this turn especially with the Amoongus being in range from a Dragon Pulse it hasn't revealed Protect yet so it's a nice slot to just fire off into there as the Gyarados does Protect on Marcus's side of the field as we see the Incineroar now go for the fake out into that slot but blocked by the Protect here as the Guzzlord Guz does fire off a Dark Pulse into the Groudon here and do some nice damage. We're going to see a little bit more health recovered from this leftovers and the Guzzlord just not wanting to go down here. That Gyarados is going to switch out now for Marcus as we see the Lunala hit the field and it is not going to find it fun to sit in front of a Guzzlord and a Wide Guard coming out from Pokemon. You're going to block a potential Precipice Blades here from the Groudon as we do see that's what Marcus goes for here and the Guzzlord going to stick around and do even more this turn round so the Incineroar has a free turn now into the Lunala this time with that U-turn going to chip that Shadow shield and really nice play here from Marty pull himself right back into this game especially with the Kyogre now hitting the field the Lunala still probably faster than it the Kyogre is still asleep we too got to worry about the Lunala can't activate that tailwind if it so wishes and um, but the Groudon is in a position where does it does it go for the precipice blades or does it go for a f maybe 
Well, if it's only got Fire Punch, it doesn't really have too many options here. You've got to get rid of this Kyogre to actually allow it to attack. We're going to see the Groudon uh, protect now. The Kyogre actually wakes up, goes for a protect as well, which does leave the Lunala vulnerable to whatever this Guzzlord goes for. We're going to see the Lunala go for the Ghostinium Z, which is, well, the Lunalium Z, which will be this Z move once again. So we will have to cut this, but you've got to imagine it's probably into the Kyogre just to make sure that you are getting rid of it, even if a protect comes out. So we'll be right back when we see the target but it's actually into the guzzlord here not into that kyogre so it does oh it is actually enough to pick up the knockout here even though the guzzlord is a dark type the Z move is just enough to pick up the knockout, but Guzzlord's done a lot of work in this game as we see the Incineroar come back onto the field. Now, going to get another Intimidate onto this Groudon here, and it is going to be able to put a lot of pressure onto the Lunala as well. The Kyogre is still in an awkward position here, as it is going. we are going to see a Moongus Beam come out from the Lunala. It probably will be into the Kyogre this time around since it did protect that previous turn. And yes, we do see the Kyogre go down, and things not looking so great for Marty right now he has lost the Kyogre the rain does lift the Groudon goes for the Precipice Blades but the Incineroar actually avoids Darkest Lyra right now coming out from the Incineroar the Incineroar probably would have taken the Precipice Blades minus two even single target there but it would have been a very big chunk of damage it does actually manage to dodge that get the Darkest Lyra off into the Lunala and pick up the knockout there as the Gyarados comes back out from Marcus and we are going to see the Landorus which is the one thing that Marty really wants right now again <laughs> these two Pokemon because one Earthquake will probably be enough to take down the Gyarados. If he's got the Z-Move, it will be enough to take down this Gyarados as well, and um, the, the Groudon as well. So I'm going to see the Gyarados just withdraw. I'm going to see the Amoongus come back onto the field for Marty, and you've got to wonder, does he go for the Tectonic Rage here now? But no, he doesn't. He just goes for that Protect here, as we are going to see the Groudon Protect as well, suspecting maybe a Tectonic Rage coming out. Now, does Pokemon predict this no he goes for the u-turn and that's a safe play i mean you put namungus nicely in range for this next turn if we do see a earthquake or we do see a tectonic rage here we are going to see the amoongus have to maybe rage powder if it doesn't have protect but we could just see maybe an earthquake coming out and there is no threat of intimidate coming out from Marcus's side of the field to nullify this Landorus's ability to just do big damage with these earthquakes but he's going to opt for a rock slide here and uh, do some nice chip damage as we see just put that Gyarados into range for another rock slide as a flare blitz now coming out onto the Amoongus and picking up the knockout there and you've got to think that this match is all but over thanks to Landorus coming in and everything being chipped down to a certain point um, makes it a lot easier for Pokemon to come in and really even up the score. Now the Groudon going to come back onto the field. If it does have Fire Punch, you know there is a chance that it might be able to sneak away a Fire Punch onto this Landorus. But the threat of a Tectonic Rage here is just too much. But we do see the Groudon just protect this turn as we are going to see maybe another Rock Slide come out from this Landorus. But before that, we're going to see the Gyarados outspeed the Landorus, which is interesting information. We're going to see Tectonic Rage now come out from the Landorus. It's probably into that Gar uh, the Groudon slot as we see the Incineroar probably go for just a U-turn in to the Gyarados to pick up the knockout there and um, because the Gyarados doesn't like the Sun it cannot go for that uh, uh, waterfall while the Sun is up while the Groudon's on the field so it is kind of conflicting and that's one of the issues there I think with the Mega Gyarados and the Groudon although they do have nice synergy together this is one situation that you don't really want occurring on the field we do see the U-turn go into the Gyarados and you've got to think all oh, but now this match is going to be sealed up you can Earthquake with your Landorus you don't really mind if your Incineroar goes down because you are taking the Groudon on down with it and you are going to clean up this match we do see the earthquake come out Incineroar actually surviving so Marty going to take this one 2 nil and tie up the game going into a game three so a really nice set here from Pogamarty coming back into this maybe the precipice blitz did make a little bit of a difference but minus two the ground on at the time I still stand by what I said earlier and I think the Incineroar would have survived and um, it would have maybe changed how the dynamics of the match would have ended but I think the result would have ended up the same so we are going to go into a game three which we will jump straight into right now and we are going to see 
Again, Pogamati on the bottom of your screen, Leo Marcus on the top of your screen. So we'll go straight into this one. Going to see Gengar and Guzzlord come out. Guzzlord doing so much work for Pogamati in that second game. So we are seeing a return of it this second time around. But with the Gengar this time rather than the Incineroar here. So we are going to see... The Incineroar and Tapu Fini come out for Marcus on the top of your screen. The Intimidate going to cycle on to Marty's side of the field as we see the Tapu Fini lead out with that Incineroar for Marcus. Now the Guzzlord going to come back now. It doesn't want to stick around in front of a Tapu Fini that could potentially have Moonblast. Kyogre going to come onto the field and if... Marty can trap this Incineroar onto the field right now. That is going to be quite big because this Kyogre will threaten a lot of damage and a lot of disruption this next turn. So we are going to see the Kyogre and Primal Revert bring the rain with it. And it's all about what this Incineroar does. Does it U-turn out this turn? And the Mega Gengar is likely to Mega Evolve, which we are going to see here. Activating that Keystone and Mega Evolving from the Gengar into the Mega Gengar. Activating that Shadow Tag ability, trapping both of these targets on Marcus' side of the field in the battle right now as it does protect, avoiding any damage from anything on the field right now. As we've seen, Icy Wind just fired off from the Tepu Fini. And because no fake out coming out from the Incineroar, you've got to think that there's probably a U-turn coming out from that slot right now into the Kyogre, just to get some board position. And if the Groudon is in the back, we're not going to see it though. We're not going to see the U-turn. It is going to be the Snarl and it's going into the Kyogre, which is useful. It has had a speed drop. It has had a special attack drop, but it's still going to be able to do some tremendous damage to this Incineroar. We do see a Sludge Bomb from the Gengar into the Tapu Fini. Do some nice big damage there. It is going to activate one of those 50% berries and get a lot of that health back that it's just lost with the Aguav Berry there. The Tapu Fini going for another Icy Wind. Gengar actually avoids, which is pretty big here. And you've got to think the Kyogre probably goes for a Water Spout here. Maybe an Orange Impulse, expecting maybe a, t a Nature's Madness from the Tapu Fini to half the health. But we're going to see the actual Kyogre does under speed the uh, Incineroar here because of that initial Icy Wind which is pretty big for Marcus. He is going to be able to probably pivot in the ground on now which is going to Primal Revert, get the Desolate Land onto the field and negate any water type attacks that would be coming out otherwise from this Kyogre. Now the thing is things look great for Marcus right now but what Marcus can do this next turn is protect the Gengar because it did miss the Icy Wind, it will be able to still have that speed advantage. He will be able to switch in the Incineroar uh, on Marty's side of the field for that Kyogre. And if the Incineroar goes down to the ground on Precipice Blades, then he can switch the Kyogre back in. But he's not opting to switch the Incineroar in just yet because obviously he hasn't got that now, knowing that it is the Landorus in the back, not the Incineroar. Um, but he is going to be protecting that ground up. But this is kind of the similar thing. If an Icy Wind doesn't come out here, which it is a Nature's Madness, it is, oh, and it does avoid the Landorus. That is a real shame there. Then the Landorus does put a lot of pressure onto this Groudon going into the next turn. Now you've got to think that the Groudon will protect Sludge Bomb into the Tapu Fini. Maybe Snarled, not quite enough to pick up the knockout, but it will be very close here onto the Tapu Fini as we see it come out now. It is actually enough to pick up the knockout. It's not a critical hit. It is enough to pick it up even the snarl just not quite enough there as we see the tectonic rage come out from marty going to be into the ground on it has protected so it's not going to be doing as much damage here but doing some big damage nonetheless behind the protect as we saw in game two here so lander is putting a lot of pressure on and it's interesting that he hasn't picked the incineral here but feeling confident that the guzzlord is going to be enough to deal with the lunar that's probably lurking in the back and uh, the lander is going to do more than enough that it did and it has shown to do in game two here for Marty so I'm going to see that into the protect here Incineroar going to come back onto the field for Marcus now and he's still not in the best of positions because neither the Groudon or the Incineroar really want to take an Earthquake from this Landorus the Gengar's trapping everything in at the minute as well we are going to see the Landorus just switch out we are going to see the Kyogre hit the field once again and the Groudon wonder what it does here maybe going for a Precipice Blades but maybe going for a fire punch as well if it does opt for a fire punch obviously with the primordial sea activated on the field now it's not going to have any effect we're going to see the fake out from the incineral into that kyogre and a hidden power is it hidden power water into the ground on it is and it is enough that's a big play here from marty revealing that sitting on that for the whole game and revealing it at the most crucial point here to pick up the knockout onto that ground on and leaving the lunala in the back and now once you remove the incineral the guzzlord has such an easy time to come in and deal with that Lunala pretty 
easily. So we're going to just see a protect from the Kyogre here as we see a hidden power water from the Gengar now into the Incineroar. Doing some nice damage actually because of that rain boost. We're going to see a side shock from the Lunala into the Gengar. It will be enough to pick up the knockout here as we are going to see what the Incineroar is left doing. It probably thinks it, it's not going to sit around in the field for too long but it does fire out a snarl, a last ditch attempt to try and reduce the damage of this Kyogre as the Guzzlord now enters the field and can it take the glory for Marty? Really nice seeing this Ultra Beast that you do not see too often appearing in this format. We are now going to see the Z move once again for Lunala from Marcus's side of the field. So once again my friends we will have to cut this and we'll come back as soon as we see where the Z move lands into Marty's side of the field. And it is going to be into the Kyogre, but probably not quite enough to pick up the knockout because Kyogre is so bulky. Surviving on 31 HP, going to fire off an Origin Pulse now, going to break the Shadow Shield on that Lunala and probably pick up the knockout on the Incineroar. And like I say, once the Incineroar goes down, the Guzzlord has such an easy time with dealing with this Lunala as we see a Snarl come out and wow. Look at the damage there, single target going to be more than enough to pick up the knockout onto that Lunala and winning the game for Marty. So Marty taking this set 2-1 and one after going down game 1. What a great set for us to feature today and uh, what an incredible way for us to kick into week 2. So guys I hope you've enjoyed that one and uh, what we'll do before we finish up today is just take a look at the results from week 2. So as you can see on your screen right now, we had Xenophist beating Pinko 2-0, Alex beating Cameron 2-0, Stu beating Costa 2-0, Nappy losing 2-0 to Luigi, Marcus 1, Pokemarty 2 as we see in our feature match here, Wimzai beating Salty Electabuzz 2-1, Salkrin winning against Ryan PB Herbert 2-0, Shade 2, Yorine 1, Chansey Mansi 2, Krim 0, Kazumi 1, Will 2 and Nightlight 1. On Johnny Hacks too so some really nice results there our players doing so well and it's very early on in the tournament and I cannot wait to get into week three so without further ado guys let's wrap this one up because it won't be long before we're gonna be back with round three of this tournament just a massive congratulations to all our players and I hope you enjoyed the feature match this week do leave comments down below let me know what your thoughts are on the Guzzlord especially the Guzzlord was crazy I loved seeing that and I think when I got the matches submitted I saw so the Guzzlord saw this match three games it was a real slog backwards and forwards it thought it was a perfect match to kick us off into week two of our ultra series circuit so thank you so much for tuning in guys hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all for the next one so until then guys take care of yourselves and bye bye